Hi and welcome back to the channel. So I finally got to take the enameling class that I've been wanting to take and it's been on my mind for a little bit that I wanted to try something new and this was one of my goals for this year was just to kind of branch out and try something new and uh, something I've never done before. And so I've spent about the last two months like reading up on uh, enameling and also checking out some DVDs and things and Royal like to say that I was over prepared, which of course I was. I ended up bringing about uh, six different projects and I only had about time for about, about three of them while we were there. But uh, it's a fairly time intensive process just because after each application of a layer of enamel, you have to clean the metal again and you have to allow it you know, to cool and you have to do each of these stages. But basically, you start with a clean copper piece that's been scoured and all the fire scale removed and then the very first step will be to apply an adhesive uh, one that's commonly used is called clear fire and that gets sprayed on there and then you can use the enamel uh, that you're going to use which in our case we used like an 80 mesh enamel and it's pretty fine grain and then you put it in a little sifter and you tap it and you try to get a pretty a decently thick and even coat on it and then the enameled piece has to be set aside in a warm area for about five minutes so that the heat uh, can evaporate the clear fire or whatever the um, holding agent was and then from that stage it is ready to go into the kiln so while it's in the kiln uh, it's like 1400 degrees Fahrenheit and roughly right around there once you open the door it drops a little bit to, into the 1300s but it stays right around 1400 to 1440 and the piece only stays in for a couple of minutes so my pieces since they were a little bit on the thicker side they tended to stay in for about three to four minutes and so i'd keep a timer and i'd stay like right in that area so i could make sure that i wasn't over firing it and so i'd check i'd open it and i'd look at it and if it had kind of like a orange peel texture, it wasn't quite ready. It needed to go a little longer till it had a nice smooth glossy finish across the top of it. And then I knew that it was ready to come out of the kiln. And so there was multiple layers of enamel applied and there's just so many color variations and colors that you can mix together or different effects you can go for. Uh, the two main types of enamels that are used is opaque which you can't see through those, and then also transparent enamels, which you can see through. Uh, I used quite a bit of the opaque colors and then a little bit of the transparent on top to give some more depth to the colors, which I thought was a really neat effect. And here I'm using a technique um, where what I'm applying there is not actually an enamel itself, but it was a counter enamel and that was applied in the very last layer of uh, the firing. And so when that was fired, it actually kind of like ate down through the layers of the enamel and kind of revealed some of the uh, previous layers. And so it gave like a really neat uh, depth effect. And you'll see that in the end product. And Roy, he used a technique called Sgraffito, uh, which is kind of brushing away the enamel before it is fired. So overall, we were really happy with our projects and how they turned out, and we had a great time. This was our first time enameling, but it is definitely something we would love to try again. And uh, if you ever get the chance to try it out a little bit, it's definitely worth, worth doing and experimenting with a little bit. And just, it can add such, cult, such bright colors to your ironwork. So thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Take care.